Hello and welcome back to Sweet Topology Masters. In this video, I'll show you how you can use Sweet Topology with freeform modeling. I'd like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this series of videos and helping me create more great content for you guys. If you want 3ds Max, Maya, Fusion 360, or any other Autodesk product, please use the link in the description. All right, so let's get started. What is freeform modeling? Well, it's one of my favorite forms of modeling. Pretty much what I like to do is just create a plane right here. I will center it and just apply it, apply it right away. Change the object color. All right, now I'll apply symmetry and then turbo smooth. Let's say two iterations, Iceland display, press G turn off the grid, and now I can begin. And what I like to do is you can model from right to left or left to right. So let's go from right to left this time. So I'll select this, move it to the center, and there we go. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is just move things around, extrude, and you get this very nice freeform modeling style. I can extrude this edge, for example, and extrude it, move it, rotate, scale in any direction. And so you get these very nice freeform shapes. I can then, for example, bridge edges. And it's very good for all sorts of organic modeling. And now I've got this, for example. I can then, let's say, smooth this. I can select this and bridge, for example. And so you get all sorts of really interesting designs happening very easily, very quickly. I can just cut to sharpen things up. I can cut further and further away to smooth things out. And so we get very interesting designs here. I can just select this in border mode and just cap this to quickly close up holes. And we can even have very nice topology because once you subdivide it, subdivision tends to fix a lot of bad results, for example, you can see right now we have triangles, this end gone here, but after Turbo Smooth, you can see it resolves it all into quads. So once I'm happy with this initial stage, I will apply it a poly on top. And pretty much what I like to do is to look at the shadows and highlights and further the side of where I'm gonna go. For example, right here, I can see a little bit of a crease start to happen, so I can kind of stress that by, for example, moving this edge down. So you can see I'm further stressing the beginnings of this crease here. Then I will cut to sharpen things up. And here I don't even have to finish the cut. I can just leave this as an end gun and we get fine to the vision. Pretty much like to work with this to give interesting results and interesting shapes. I like to apply symmetry and apply on top so I can have both sides and I can do something in the center, for example. Can extrude to get these kinds of panel lines happening here. I can apply at a play on top turtle smooth. For example, if I want to add some smaller details here, let me just make a copy of this. What I would do is maybe two iterations, maybe too much. Let's go with one at a poly on top. And so now that I've done that, I can add further detail to this. I can do things like regularize. Let me move this out a little bit. As you can see, you get really nice shapes happening here. However, this type of model can also greatly benefit from retopology. So for example, if we go back to this, the thing about this is because we're modeling with n-gons and triangles here, when we 
Turbo smooth it, solidify it, you get a lot of uneven topology here, which makes it more difficult to add for detail. You can see, for example, these areas are close together, and then this is much further apart. So this can also benefit from its topology. And a lot of times, certain types of details can benefit from having more even topology. So for example, let's say for example, we have lots of holes right here. So what we can do is just, let's say, inset by polygon, or actually let's just go into bevel and then use by polygon. Let's first outline. Okay. Let's apply. And then let's also add a little bit of height as well. So you can see because the topology is uneven, we don't quite get the holes that we want here. More we get this kind of situation right here. So if we were to topologize this, we get a lot more even polygons here and we get more of an even type of hole here as opposed to something resembling a hole and then this kind of elongated shape right here. So let's re topologize this. Not to mention with some additional modifiers like Panelizer, it also benefits having more even topology. So in this situation, because of this seam here, because of this panel line, we actually want to set up some smoothing groups. What I'm going to do is press Control A and just give this a smoothing group of one. Then I will select this, hold Control, double click to loop this, and I will give this two. And then I will left click on this, hold Control, double click here, and I will give this three. And that's just because of the panel line we have happening here. Turbo smooth, smoothing groups option, and there we go. So now I'm going to apply Edit Poly and I'm going to delete the left half. All right. And then read Topology. So what I'm going to do is increase Regularize to 1 and an Isotropy and Optivity to which is 0 and then Compute. Let's go with 5000 see what that gives us. All right. That's too high. Let's go with 1000. All right. You can see the main situations. It is an improvement. So look at the Topology flow from here to now. But it's still not good enough, so we're going to apply Smooth real quick. Auto Smooth, just to take care of these areas. And we're going to read Topology again. Alright, let's go with, let's say, 750. So as you can see, when you use multiple Topology modifiers, you actually get better results each time. So compare the first one, where we got this area, to now this one, as you can see, we have a much better loop happening here and it's much more even. All right, so now it's easier to get nice whole details because of how much more even the topology is. So I can, for example, select this. All right, I like to use a script of regularizer just to regularize, just to make it a little bit more even. I will enter in, let's say, one here to save the selection to one. So I can always just kind of reselect it. And what I want to do is make a few of these a little bit larger just to make it a little bit more even in size. Now I can left click here, one, there we go. Let's use a new edit modifier. We can just inset this and bevel and we get these nice whole details. So a lot of small details are easier to create when to retopologize and get more even topology here. And so if these holes look a little bit too basic, we can work with this and do something more special with this. For example, we can select the polygons around this Let's say like this, looks like a nice little shape here and we can just extrude that. And so now we've got both the holes and this nice kind of area made for them. And so you can see how we're getting more interesting results as a result of that. See how we get this nice kind of layering of details that really helps to add some nice visual interest to our models. Sometimes I want to straighten things out just a little bit here. I would use the cut tool just to make things more even. And then don't forget to weld afterwards. So target well then hold control click remove to remove that so as you can see I've made this a little bit more even and so now I can create some nice details here in order to make this look in more interesting I can just select one of these and then use set flow or just face constraints and move this so 
So as you can see with the Hippolyte topology, we can even out our topology and get more interesting results. So for example, let me just clone this out so we can compare. And here I will just delete all of this. So compare the topology of what we had previously to afterwards, you can see how much easier it is to add further detail. So especially look at this area on the bottom right. Here we have smaller polygons, larger stretched out ones. Whereas here, it's a lot more even, thus making it more easy to add further detail. And because of the topology here, it's very easy to add these kinds of border details as well. So you can see here, if I wanted to add a border detail, well, I couldn't because the loop is like this. And right here, for example, the loop is like this. So I can't really add a nice, let's say, border detail along here. But here, because of the excellent way the topology works, the loop is all ready for us to go here, even here as well. So retopology is very good at creating these nice loops going around here. Now, of course, it's not completely even. What I can do, for example, is use cut to even things out and then double click on this and hold control to remove that and just kind of fix up some areas here and there. But it's much easier to do that than to do the whole cut of the loop in the first place. So as you can see, we get this nice topology ready for border details. And in many situations, the unevenness can actually work to your benefit because you can see, because it's uneven, it actually creates more of an interesting effect right here. So you can do a little bit of extra work to make it more even, but sometimes it just gives you a more alien result if you don't actually even things out. All right, so typically before we topology, what I would have to do is I would, for example, use Swift Loop, then hold down Shift to apply Set Flow right afterwards. So here, if I insert a loop like this using Swift Loop, you can see how it doesn't match the curvature. And what it would do is make the parts sharper and sharper. However, if you use Set Flow, it will actually match the curvature of the strong geometry. But if you hold down Shift while using Swift Loop, you get that behavior. So this is what I had to do previously, or I would have to apply subdivision and then go in here. You can see once again, it's stretched this way. I would have to once again insert loops through here, or for example, remove these loops, which will serve the purpose of making things more even here. However, in many situations, this would not work well because right now what I'm giving you is a very simple example. It's just as simple as this. When you have more complex topology here, And when you start getting, for example, triangles and endgons involved, suddenly it's not that easy to insert loops. You can see how the loops aren't quite going through here. And if you apply out a poly on top of that, you know, it becomes very difficult to fix things up. So you can see even in this horrible situation with this happening here, well, if we read topology this and maybe have a, a much lower face count here, increase, regularize, you can see it actually does even a good job of fixing these situations. So this was before, highly stretched topology, really something bad happening here. After topology, look at this right here, for example. Much more even, much easier to work with. And even though this is a very bad result, you should avoid this. With topology makes it easier to fix this because now we can just select this face constraint, just kind of move this out. And you can see kind of fixes that for us. So retopology can even fix up situations like that and still give you nice clean results to work with. So now I can, for example, shell 
and then let me increase the outer amount and then hit a poly and I can easily further work with this. For example, what I would do to add more interesting details is just say hold down shift to select this. First I'll start just by moving this. All right, maybe using make planer to flatten this out and then we can remove this a little bit just to even this out and then extrude that and so I can just apply symmetry move this a little bit over here to get some sort of let's say symmetrical armor pad and so already we're getting much more interesting results happening here so read topology can really save you in many situations and give you the better topology for much easier for the detailing Thank you for watching and take care.